there, my name is Morning with my co-host Corey. We are the real guys, and this is the real show with two ears. We're coming to you today with a very special anniversary episode on one of our favourite films. You heard it in the intro, folks. It's Scooby Doo 2002. Scooby Doo, where are you? And as always, I'm coming to my co-host Corey. How are you doing today, Corey? I'm doing very well, thank you. Doing very well indeed. So, what we're going to bring you first is we're in the mystery machine, yes. Corey. It's mystery solving time. Are you more of a Shaggy or a Scooby? I, I think you're more of a Fred. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> sure. I think you're more Fred, to be honest. That's the first time I've been described as Fred. No, maybe, no you're Shaggy, aren't you? You're yes. Shaggy. Yeah, you're Shaggy. <laughs> I'm probably, I'm like Velma or someone, aren't I? <laughs> you know. I'm Scrappy-Doo, probably. I'm Scrappy-Doo. Oh, everyone's favourite. Probably, I know. I hated Scrappy-Doo when I was younger. <laughs> Anyway, I'm, I'm, I've become Scrappy-Doo. I've become the very thing I swore to destroy <laughs> in Scrappy-Doo. But you're you're definitely Shaggy. Yeah. So, does that make me Scooby? I don't know. It makes you whoever you want to be. It makes me Scrappy. So, but what we're going to do is, we're in the mystery machine. Yes. It's time to solve the mystery. We know at the start of the real show, we like to drink interesting things. Yes. We drink ginger shots. Yeah. We drink... We drink Fizzy lemon water in San Pellegrino. But today... Not a sponsor. But today, we're drinking Fanta. Yes. But not any kind of Fanta. Not orange Fanta, not lemon Fanta. Mystery Fanta. Correct. That's right. It's guess the Fanta flavour. There's a QR code here that says scan for clues, but we don't need any clues, Corey. I We're nope. not going to spread out and look for clues. Definitely not. Spread out and look for clues. Did you watch the, ca- the cartoon? Of I did. Okay. I, don't, I can't tell you what iteration it was. Whatever was around mid-2000s. Nice. So you're gonna, I'm going to open this first. Nice. Oh, I hear that crisp opening. Did you hear that, Corey? I did. Right, I'm going to pour them out. I'm not. I'm not. I'm trying not to smell it. We've got cups here. I'll pick. I'll, how, how much do you want? I'm just pouring both the full. Give me about half. All right. Okay. I'll have the full one then. Yeah. It's p- very pink in it consistency, is. in colour. Right. Here you go. Reminds me of another cartoon. That does. It does. What cartoon? Pink juice. Did it. Did it. All right. Did it. All right. Did che- it. Yeah. Cheers then. Anyone else from the, the Pink Panther fan? All right. And chase. Is it coming through? What are the tones you're getting hmm. from this pink Fanta, this mystery Fanta? See, I don't know if it's pink because what's in it. If it's pink to throw you off, hmm. could it be grapefruit perhaps? It tastes a bit like grapefruit. It's a bit like. On a sec, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> you couldn't. I ain't gonna I'm lie. getting notes of um, ras- not raspberry or, or, or berry. Or that would like explain it. the colour. Yeah. Raspberry perhaps or. Grapefruit is also what I'm The thing is, it won't be one. It'd be a mix of stuff. Mm, that's right. Yes. We're just sniffing. You're just listening. This is great. This is great radio, isn't it, Corey? This is great listening content. Fantastic. Dude, sniffing, sniffing little cups of Fanta going, mm, mm. what could it be? I think it, it, I'm going to say grapefruit. Yeah. I, I wonder think. if we can uncover the mystery. You can. Maybe do, during the episode at some point, you should look up. What type? Of, what what color Fanta is actually the pink Fanta? <laughs> it will be online somewhere. Somewhere will tell us. Someone will have cracked it. So we'll just drink this throughout the episode. Then yeah. this will be our. Do you want it in the bottle or? I'll be right. All right. Okay. If you need a refill, just ask me. I'll stick with a half. So we're going to be talking about Scooby Doo 2002. Correct. We'll go through the review. We'll give it a real rating. We'll talk about some of the production behind it. We'll talk about some of the great characters, some of the the old fashioned cartoon and everything. So, you watched the old cartoon, did you not? Uh, yes, like I said, whichever was around. Yeah, whichever was around then. Do you know how you know what to do in Scooby-Doo? Hmm? You just look for the thing that's not the same colour as the background. Yeah. Because the animation was... <laughs> the animation was so... You know, it's, it's uh, hanna Bob era, isn't it? Correct. Scooby-Doo. Yes. Same um, as um, uh, Wacky Races. Yes. It's, and various other cartoons. Yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. hanna Bob era, <laughs> great legend of the, the cartoon... Uh, of the cartoon sphere. So... It's Hanna Barbera Productions with Scooby Doo, and they made the great cartoon as well, where everything's animated. It's always the old man in the ghost costume. Yes. You've got to run through the hallways, the great hallway joke where they run through the doors and all of that, and Scooby's running animation, everything. So, this is the 2002 Scooby Doo, directed by Raj Gosnell, and screenplay by James Gunn. You're afraid, fan there we go. Of the man himself. He's there. A fan of James Gunn. Oh, well, yeah. Going into Obviously. The, Guardians of the Galaxy, The Suicide Squad, Guardians right, of the Galaxy well, 2. Yeah. You know, 
not the original, not the David Ayer yeah. Suicide Squad, the <laughs> sequel with, um, with John Cena, John Cena and Idris Elba. Yes, so, and uh, Peter Capaldi. Oh, yes, of course. So the plot of this, it's Mystery Inc. The team are back. Correct. It's Freddie Prince Jr. as Fred, and uh, his spouse Michelle, Michelle Geller as <laughs> Daphne. Correct. Uh, with Matthew Lillard, Linda Cardinelli uh, as well. They're 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 Mystery Inc. and they're going around solving mysteries. So first they solve the mystery of the lunar ghost who is flying around in this ghost costume. Yes. And then it seems like they're all a bit tired of their roles. Yeah. You know, they're playing the role Daphne always gets captured and and, and Felma is lose. F- I was just called a Felma. 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 <laughs> Felma is always losing her glasses yeah. and everything. And then Fred's always taking all the glory of everything because he's the leader. And Shaggy's just... Scooby, they're just hanging around. Yeah, pretty you much. You know, they're just there. So they're the comic, the comedy relief. And then they split up. Correct. They break in the in the aftermath after they discover it's old man Jenkins or whatever his name is. Yeah. You know, old it's old man Magilla buddy, whatever his name is. I think it is. No, old or, man is, Jenkins. or is, Jen- is it Jenkins? Is it old man Jenkins? I just made that up. I didn't even remember. Old man Jenkins is at least what someone we have at some oh. point. Old actually. man Jenkins. You could just imagine them saying it. Just pulling off the zombie mask or whatever and going, Old oh, man Jenkins. And he goes, I wouldn't have got away with it too uh, if it for you, meddling kids. I'm trying to figure it out now. Luna so after goes. they discover it's him. Yes. Um, four, is it? I think he says four here. No, two years later, sorry. Two, they're, two years later, they're invited to Spooky Island. Old Ooh. man old man Smithers. Uh, old man Smithers? <laughs> That's who it is. What, from The Simpsons? <laughs> Yes, Mr. That's, Smithers. That's definitely who that is. Smithers, I'm home. So, ah, <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Burns. So he goes, I would have got away with the two if it were for you, meddling kids. So they discover it's old man Smithers. Yes. But however, <laughs> it's funny because I've got a fact here that says apparently the the villain at the start of the film was supposed to be the villain at the end as well. Oh, uh, okay. So maybe he would have carried on, but anyway, yeah. no more of old man Smithers. But it's nice to show us the routine of the show, kind of, in that in that opening. Yeah. Then we get Spooky Island. We do. A, hor- a horror-themed tropical resort on a fantastic island. It's like Jurassic Park again, owned by the star of this film, I think we can safe to say. His character is Emil Mond- Mondavarius, <laughs> but it is the man himself, Rowan Atkinson. Correct. And we all love a bit of Rowan Atkinson. Or a Mr. Bean. Exactly. Johnny English. Oh, all the greats. Who else you got? Go on. You know, Blackadder. There you go. Any more? <laughs> That's the thing I'm out. Um, if you can name one, go ahead. Uh, he's in... Is it Four Wednesdays and a Funeral? He's in? I think so, yeah. And he's in... Um, is it Love Actually? Is it a different... He's in Never Say Never Again. The James Bond he's in he there is. with Sean Connery. Is it Love Actually he's in? Or is it another kind of rom-com thing? Uh... Films, so Black Adder goes forth as well. Remember that. Black Adder's really good. Black Adder is really, really, good. really good. As is Johnny English. Of course, we've discussed it enough. We have. Oh, oh yeah, nine o'clock news courses. Yeah, yeah, nine o'clock news. Yeah. Jesus. So. Soon to be uh, Netflix. But what? Man vs. Oh B. yeah, Man vs. B. Yeah, this is what I said. Man vs. B. So did I. Well, like, he's fighting himself. <laughs> yeah. Almost. <laughs> I'd like that. I'd like a film where someone just tries to battle against the pure chaotic force that is Mr. B. <laughs> so would I. He is in love, actually. Mr. Bean's just running around causing chaos, and one guy's trying to clean it all up. Oh, so. apparently he's also in uh, the new uh, Wonka film coming out next year. Is he? Is he Willy Wonka? <laughs> I don't think he is. Oh, he better... No, he's not, cause, because Willy Wonka's young. It's a young Willy oh, Wonka. Oh, right, okay. He bet he's Willy Wonka's dad or something. I think it might be. William Wonka. William Wonka. <laughs> As in... He's playing Christopher Lee's part in the, in yeah, the Johnny Depp pretty version. much. Um, Lollipops. Michael, Michael Keenan Key, Matt Lucas. Tooth. Cavities, Thormanir <laughs> Cavities, Cavities on a stick. <laughs> uh, I actually quite like that film. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh. In, a, in a weird way, I quite like that film. Okay. I'm trying to find out who Rowan Atkinson is. No one knows who he is. <laughs> what? No, people don't know no, who no, Rowan Atkinson is. No, no, in Wonka. I don't know who Rowan Atkinson is. I'm like, Americans, I bet they have no idea who Rowan Atkinson is. Uh, I, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Who is? Oh, undisclosed role. Okay, fair enough. However, in this film, he is Mondavarius. Yes. The owner of the island, and he summons the gang to, to solve a mystery. Yes. 
because monsters are on the loose. Correct. And his his um his, uh, some kind of luchador wrestler is also there, <laughs> and <laughs> Velma attends a performance by an actor who tells him that um there's been a, a rituals on the island. There's demons who live on the island and they're yes. plotting revenge. Meanwhile, Shaggy is falling for a very cons- inconspicuous woman called Mary Jane. Correct. And let's not read into that any no. more than it, than we need to. No, there's, def- there's definitely not an underlying joke there. Australia's own Isla Fisher. Correct. Who is very it's nice to see, even though this was shot in Australia. Can I also, yeah, I was going to so. say it's an actual it's an actual uh, resort. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's not called Spooky Island. No, it's no. called a Tangaluma. Tangaluma. British actual place. There we go. What is this? And it, in Australia, of course, in Australia, and we've got Isla Fisher as well. Oh, I'm a big fan of Isla Fisher, you know, now you see me and all that. There you go. I quite like her. Don't confuse her with Amy Allen, though, because people <laughs> sometimes do. But, sorry, not Amy, Amy Adams. Oh, you can't know, know Amy Allen is. I don't know who Amy Allen is. <laughs> Amy Adams, though. Confused for Isla Fisher sometimes. Because they're both gingers, I suppose. Uh, Amy Allen is, a, is, a, is an actress. Is, she, is Amy Allen an actress? Yeah. Is she not ginger, is she? No, she's blonde. Okay, good. At least according to this picture of her, she's blonde. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I think... I've, uh, Are you looking her up now? I am, yeah. <laughs> um... Amy, Amy, what, Amy, uh, how are you spelling Alan? A-double-L-E-N. Oh. I typed in A-L and then it came up in that spelling. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Is she in Star Wars? Is she, is she, she's not, a, she's not Ayla Sakura, is she? She voices someone. Yeah, she is. Oh, I, th- I thought so. <laughs> I knew I had her in her name. There you go. I, th- I, sw- I, I swear she worked on, um, she did something in the prequels, I think. She she wasn't Ayla Sakura by trade. She's in episode three. She, yeah, yeah, I know. She's in episode two as well. Yes, uh, visual effects. Yes, yeah, she's visual effects. Yeah, yeah. She does. She's like a backstage yeah. person, but she was. She just played Ayla for um, the cameo, I think. Yes. So because Ayla was a comic character, and she was brought into canon by, you know, in it being episode two. Anyway. Anyway. So back to the Scooby Doo. Yes. Spooky Island. Spooky Island, of course. So do you feel like, of course, the villains in this from our actual demons, those sort of gargoyle type yeah. figures. The island demons. Correct. Which are actual demons. Yes, what do you think of that? Not being a not like being a hologram a... Or, a, or a man in a suit kind of thing. I didn't mind it. I mean, it's if it was a suit, I, I, I wouldn't like it being a suit, because also that would be a, a massive undertaking. What villain is going to get like 20 people to run around in gargoyle suits? Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Um, I mean, you know, it revolves around shamans mm. and voodoo. There's a guy with like a, what was it? He's, he's got like a chicken. Yeah. He's like he's, he's just holding a chicken, mm. and he's like, "Oh, but don't go in that castle because there's magic in that yeah. castle." And then obviously Velma, not Velma, so he definitely goes in there anyway. And the demons are possessing in Fred, Velma, yes. and all them. They go into their eyes or their mouths or something. Like they, oh, what is it? They go in and then like their soul flies out, and yes. then it goes into a weird well somewhere. Yeah, and their body's taken over because I remember Mary Jane. Correct. Has herself. Um, taken over by she, one of the she demons. has one of unfortunately one of the worst CGI in a film where her face yeah changes. her face changes <laughs> I remember on the motorcycle aren't they I yeah. think and then her, she turns her face and goes like <laughs> and her eyes go green it's like ugh okay yeah it's like Fisher weird <laughs> it's like that film with um, Jake Gyllenhaal nice and um, weirdly Amy Adams <laughs> as well I think it's called Nocturnal <laughs> Animals it's quite good actually there you go um, and I think Jake Gyllenhaal plays this writer and he writes a version of Amy Adams in in his uh, script. Oh, okay. And his, the Amy Adams in the script is played by Isla Fisher, which I think is really, really funny. So I don't know if that was an intentional joke or what. But so what? Meanwhile, Shaggy and Scooby have just been goofing about this whole time. Pretty much. They're in the kitchen making that massive sandwich. Yeah. Shaggy's like closing fridge doors and stuff. And I feel like Matthew Lillard has really taking it in the stride of being Shaggy. I feel like he could do Shaggy now if he wanted. Well, he, yeah. he does. It, does he? Yeah. It, it it wasn't his choice to not do the original ones. Disney or Warner Brothers just didn't recast him. Right. And he wasn't told. They were like, oh, when they did, um, I think it was Scoop was the first one. Right. With like Zac Efron, I think, or whatever. Yeah. He just wasn't even asked or wasn't mentioned. They literally just recast someone and he just found out by IMDb. Oh. And he was like, oh, well, I guess this is me finished now. Yeah. He, he still likes doing it, and he does it all the time if you go to conventions and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, he still very much likes it, they just don't recast him for some reason. They should do, but they should do like a Logan. Even, e- oh, yeah, what, it's old Shaggy. Old man Shaggy, you know, and solving mysteries with Scooby-Doo, yeah. who's like an old, actually, gripping reality is, the fact that they've, 
this film had aged how, you know, yeah. things age, Scooby-Doo would be dead. Yes. He's just a sad man with a dead dog. Yes. You know, let's do, let's make old man Shaggy. Let's do it. <laughs> Scooby-Doo's dead in the ground, in a ditch. And Shaggy's just going out solving mysteries and beating up criminals with like a baseball bat or something. I assume, I could be wrong, I assume Shaggy's the youngest out of all of yeah, them. Yeah, I think so. But they're about the same age. Because Shaggy strikes me as like a college university yeah, student. Yeah, yeah. Whereas everyone else seems they're a bit... pretending to bit, be. A bit older. It's like in Spider-Man where <laughs> they're all clearly 30-year-old <laughs> adults, yeah. but they're playing like 18-year-old children. Yeah. So this film was originally set to have a much darker tone, okay. as you know. I'm essentially going to poke fun at the older cartoons and think that some of that stuff may have remained in the film, like the very sort of hammy fisted sets. Yes. You know, everything's a big night and everything's a big archway and everything's a big well. That sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and James Gunn confirmed that the original cut of the film got an R rating <laughs> and there was CGI apparently used to cover several elements of the film. Not that we yeah. know it's evident, but or we can look back. I'm not too sure. Um... However, maybe James Gunn's just lying. Possibly. Now, one of the this is one of the few films to actually reveal the real first names of Scooby and Shaggy. Yes. Do you know what their actual names are? Well, it's Shaggy Rogers. It, uh, actually, Shaggy's first name is Norville. Oh, okay. Scooby. Isn't it like Scooby or something? He's, yes, he's called Scooby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's called Scooby. <laughs> so. Scooby Dooby. Scooby Do. Scooby Dooby. And. Scooby's dad's got a weird name as well. I can't remember. Has he? I thought it was Scooby Doo's brother, the white one. His, his whole um, family trees. I remember his yeah. whole family trees messed up. Shaggy, there's like one called like Noob, not Newbie. <laughs> Newbie. <laughs> there's one called like Ruby or something, isn't there? There's like they're all called variations on Scooby, I think. Yeah. Uh, one of the original cast members of the original Scooby Doo cartoon actually returns in this. Oh yeah. Do you know who it is? Uh, is it? I'm trying to think of what the characters in there. Is it the weird nerd guy that Velma hangs out with? No. Okay. Um, that's Seth Green, isn't it? Maybe. I think it is Seth that's, Green. That's, no, to be fair, that's the only Fra- character I can think of. It's Frank Welker, the guy right. who originally voices Freddy and Scooby in the Scooby Doo cartoons. Actually, returns to play the creatures in this, to voice the creatures in this film. Oh, okay. To voice the demons. So. Yankee Doodle Doo. Yankee then there's, Doodle then there's Doo. Great, I told you. Great Grandpa Doo. Okay. Grandpa well, Doo. Grandpa Doo. Uh, I said, what? I can't. Be. Yeah, Dad, I play. Howdy do, Ruby do, Scooby do, Ruby do, uh, Yab, Yabby do, Skippy do, and then Scrappy is Ruby's son, apparently. Right. Which makes sense because it's. He's his nephew. Yeah. There's also others. Mm. There's a Dooby do, uh, Dick to do, Scooby D. Scooby D. Yeah. <laughs> is that Scooby Doo's evil brother? No, it's like Grandpa Doo's other kid. Well, you're looking at a family tree yeah. here. You're looking at a family tree of Scooby Doo <laughs> yeah. relatives. Yeah. Uh, Whoopie Doo and Whoopie Doo, Scooby Dum. What you can't? <laughs> Whoopie Doo and Scooby Dum. Yeah. Who is Whoopie Doo? Who is? I Whoopi- don't know. Is Whoop- it someone? Is it um, Scooby Doo's like second cousin? It's uh, no. So again, it's it's um, Grandpa Doo's other kid, and it's right. uh, it's Uncle. What is that? <laughs> Anyway. These are all related to Scooby. Uncle, H- Uncle Horton Do right. is Grandpa Do's kid. Okay. So that would make him Uncle to Scooby Do, and then right. it's um, Whoopie Do and uh, Scooby Dum is of his kids. So it's right. like so it's his cousins. Yeah. Because it's his his, yeah. his grandfather's son. Yes. And his his dad. Yeah. Who's Scooby Do's dad? Uh. Dad, I do. Dad, of course. <laughs> of course he is. So I also like how we know that Dooby Doo, Dixie Doo and, and Scooby D have a parent. <laughs> we don't know who they are because oh. it's, it's just got a question mark. I also don't know who the mum is. They're to, probably uh, called Ruddy Doo or something like that. Yeah, Dud- something like that. Diddly Doo or whatever his name is. <laughs> so, however, we have a few more, more um, little items of, items of trivia. Oh, perhaps. yeah? Got some trivia. So, yes, yeah, some some. Scooby Scooby trivia so there was uh, a lot of costume in this I remember those iconic costumes correct apparently Fred Prince Jr. hated wearing the Fred costume <laughs> why? he just didn't like it um, I bet it's for, for, for neckerchief may, may, yeah maybe the ascot didn't yeah. like it apparently Sarah Michelle Gellar also hated Daffy's boots ah uh, okay didn't like it 
And anytime she was off, anytime she was out of costume, anytime she shot from the waist upwards, she's wearing sneakers. That's fair. So <laughs> that reminds me. Weirdly, that reminds me of Star Wars because everything does. <laughs> Remember Peter Peter Cushing in yes. A New Hope? He always wore he always wore slippers because the costume boots hurt his feet. So and he, he shot from the waist upwards. He's wearing slippers all the time. So, which I think is funny. Um, and also, uh, adding to the adding, adding to the uncomfortable costume, Freddie Prince Jr. shaved his head after this film. Nice. Not because he not because he was so disgraced <laughs> he did it, but because the blonde bleach dye ruined his hair. Oh, okay. So he just got rid of it all. That and this sense. is the most. 2002 film you could ever encounter yeah like everything is offensively 2002 like everyone's wearing like sweaters and and jorts <laughs> jean shorts everyone's wearing like khaki trousers and there's that guy in, who's got the hair in like he's got like his hair is like squared yeah and he's got little spikes on the little hair and his on the you know who know what I'm talking about don't you yeah um all the girls are wearing like sleeveless tank tops, but they're full length tops. Yeah, it's it's offensively 2002. <laughs> if you know what 2002 was like, it was like that. Yes, you know. I believe what you're uh, describing the hair wise. I'm going to quickly Google it. I think oh, it's God, called. It's got a name, has it? Of course, it's got a name. I think it's called Liberty Spikes. Liberty Spikes. No, Liberty Spikes is a spike. Yeah, no, yeah, it's Liberty Spikes. All oh, right, okay. Because uh, that's what like the Mohawks are spikes, but right. I think it's also when you've got the spikes coming out from the any part of your hair. Okay. There you go. Just okay. look, look up Liberty Spikes. Fair enough. Jim Carrey was considered for the role of Shaggy. Uh, it doesn't surprise me, but also I don't think it would have worked. No, maybe not. Uh, I can just imagine him walking around uh, similar to Ace Ventura. During the time, Sarah Michelle Gellar was actually filming uh, season six of Buffy the Vampire Slayer during oh. the production of this film. Fair enough. So there you go. I'm a big fan of Buffy, so there we are. And oh, and, and there was um, actually a switch around because Sarah Michelle Gellar is actually blonde, um, who actually who portrayed a Daphne who is of re- a redhead. Yes. And Isla Fisher, who is a redhead, portrayed Mary Jane, who's blonde. Yeah. So switch them around, perhaps. And then we have um, Freddie Prince Jr. and Matthew Lillard. They were previously together in She's All That. And in Summer Catch in 2001. There you go. I'm a, I'm a, I like a bit of shoes, all that. So. I've not seen it's it. It's a good film. Have you not? No. Oh, okay. Um, and then, of course, we've got um, uh, Linda Cardinelli, who's apparently quite a big fan of the original Scooby-Doo. Yep. And she, and she was very happy to play Velma. So there we go. I don't know what she's done since this. Uh, I don't know. Because I don't even think I've really seen her or anything. Not too sure. Another, another potential casting for Shaggy. Mike Myers. Hmm. That I can see less likely being the case. Okay. Pool party scene. Sugar Ray. Do you, you know Sugar Ray? I know Sugar Ray. Sugar's in the pool party scene. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's sure. If you noticed him. I did not. So, originally, as I said, Scrappy-Doo was not going to be the main villain. No. Originally, it was Old Man Smithers. Yes. Who was going to be the villain at the end of the film. So... And throughout the film, there are hints that, of course, we know that Rowan Acton is, in fact, not playing Mr. Mondavarius. He's no, actually not. Scrappy doing a robot suit. Yes. Um, and also we see that um, in his office, the bookends are the shape of dog's heads. Yes. And he has a carved dog head statue. And also we see him scratching behind his ear several times. Yes, we do. Like he has fleas. Yes. So there we go. Um, and he says, this is a great... This The way this... Tri- the way this trivia is written is quite funny so I'm just going to read this verbatim to you right? Okay. I want IMDB trivia and this is how this trivia is written verbatim though James Gunn hasn't entirely disowned the film he has expressed regret in making Scrappy the main villain after receiving some backlash from the character's fans there we are Scrappyites coming after James Gunn I'm not a scra- Scrappyite I remember my friend Esme shout out to you Esme if you're listening um, she had a like a Scrappy do sort of plush doll okay and when you press its chest it'd go you know scrappy yappy doll or whatever yeah right? i used to have great pleasure in kicking it down the hallway <laughs> in just punting it as far as i could yeah and i enjoyed that very much so <laughs> um and if you didn't know the kitchen on on the spooky island castle where shaggy and S- scooby have their big you know cop- sandwich competition or whatever correct um it's the same kitchen where the brainwashing videos were filmed oh okay so, and this explains why there's a camera in there. Yes. And also why Shaggy does the whole camera thing with with Scooby. Yeah, uh, and uh, also how 
um, what's his name? What's Ron Atkinson's name again? Who? Ron Atkinson. Oh, um, Mondavarius. Thank you. It's also why Mondavarius has a picture of Scooby-Doo in his office. Yes. From the kitchen. So which, there we go. And he's got a weird cat bobblehead. He has. Which is one thing I always weirdly remember from this film. Ron Atkinson's cat bobblehead. Yeah, because Scooby-Doo keeps hitting it. Yeah. But another thing about this film, um, to do with Scooby-Doo, is he wasn't there. No. There was no... There were people acting against <laughs> nothing. It's, yeah. tr- it's tremendous. It's there's no age of like the CGI where you could have someone who's like an actor on stage who's sort of being that CGI character. They've got like balls on their head or whatever. Yes. They're in the ping pong suit. There's no Andy Circus to be seen. There is not. Right. This this film came out the same year as the Two Towers. Yes, it did. Take that in for a minute. Gollum, one of the greatest CGI creations ever in the world, played by the fantastic Andy Circus, the yes. awesome Andy Circus, who plays him to a T. And Gollum, you know, inspired by his own cat, you know, doing the voice on set with Elijah Wood. And this is the same year as Matthew Lillard trying to eat a sandwich against nothing. Trying to go, like, zoink Scoob to, to no one. Correct. No one is there. There's no dog. There was, they'd have, they had a head. They had Scooby-Doo's. Yeah, they were did. carrying around Scooby-Doo's plasticine head on a stick. And that was as much as, much as they got to act against. Yes. I've seen so many behind-the-scenes fil- films and, and, and BTS little shorts of sort of Freddie Prince Jr. and Matthew Lillard looking looking directly down at something and, and speaking to it like, hey, Scooby, you've got to stop doing eating all the Scooby snacks and there's nothing is there. You see, it's... it's <laughs> They've gone insane. It's uh, funny you bring that up and the two towers up because, obviously, as we know now, we think later on in life it'll get a bit easier and it'll get even better and then you have, like, what was it? It was like The Hobbit, where they're just looking at a tennis ball, and Christopher Lee's, or, or was it? Um, it's Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen's like, having a breakdown. <laughs> yeah, on a the breakdown. Set <laughs> because uh, because he's like, acting against nothing. He yeah. says, "This isn't why I became an actor." <laughs> it's, so. it's like, yeah, well, Two Towers might have had Andy Circus, but yeah. uh, Hobbit does not. Hobbit does not. No. Well, lastly, The Hobbit does. It does. Because Gollum is in The Hobbit. But. He's in one scene with Bilbo, Riddles yeah. in the Dark. But sometimes it's a, it's a tennis ball. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it is a tennis, tennis ball. ball. At least, you know, Andy's on set and, you know, but sometimes it is just a tennis ball. Yeah. Because I remember Christopher Lee's film, because Christopher Lee couldn't make it to um, New Zealand when they were shooting it. Because yes. obviously he was, what, I think 80 or... It was old, old, yeah. Old, yeah, yeah, bless him. Um, but, yeah, he had to shoot his scenes in England and against in, on CGI and stuff, and it was he was superimposed in yes. afterwards. Bless him. So, big, big Christopher Lee fans we here are. at The Real Show. It's one and of the, uh, is it two episodes we've done on? Actors Spotlights, is yeah, two yeah. Or three? Two or three? Two three, I think. Jack Black was one. Jack Black was one. Chris Lee was, was one. one. And that was a series that was quickly discontinued. Yeah, it was. Anyway, we have, um, however, maybe <laughs> we'll bring it back. I like how it's on, Chris, Christopher Lee, Jack Black. <laughs> yeah. On Matthew Lillard or on um, Mary Fairy Prince Jr. I know Freddie Prince very successful nowadays. True. You know, Star Wars Rebels, a um, bunch of other things. Uh like like us, he has a great passion for professional wrestling, Freddie Prince True. Jr. So and I like Sarah Michelle Gellar as well, big fan of big fan of Buffy. She was also in Star Wars Rebels, actually. She played the second uh, not second sister, that's that's Triller. Yes. She was the si- seventh sister, I believe. So There you go. And then we are and we're also a big fan of Roman Atkinson as well here. As Correct. Well. We like a bit of Mr. Bean. We do. And Blackadder. Yes. Of course. Favourite Blackadder scene? Come on. Uh, I think the one that comes to the top of my head is... It's when... Right, so it's Blackadder's go fourth. Yep, that's a, a classic. Um, And it... Oh, there's, there's two. Weirdly, it's more Baldrick. It's more Baldrick. It is there's more Baldrick. There's two. There's one where Baldrick... Is it carved... the German guns? No. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, well... Um, so one of them is where he's carving his own name into a bullet. Because mm. like, oh, everyone, everyone says there's a bullet with your name on it. So I thought I'd carve my own so no one can hit me with it. Yeah. And then the other one is the poem, which I think is what you're on about. This is called The German Gun. Yes. Boom, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> and it thus continues. It does. I was like, how did the war start? <laughs> is a great one as well. There was a period where a war won on. Yeah. But now the war's on. <laughs> a was black that... Do you mean how did the war start? Yes. Or well, there's, um... Oh, what is it? Uh, in the Victorian, is it Victorian? Which one's it? One with, one with Queenie. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything with Lord Flashheart. Oh, yeah, of course. Great. Woof! Woof! Good old Ricky, no, I say Ricky Gervais. It's not Ricky no, Gervais. no, it's... Um... <laughs> Bloody hell's his name. Oh, goodness. That's going to haunt me now. 
I've been watching all of his stuff recently as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's Rick Mail. It's Rick Mail. Yes, Rick Mail. Yeah, I've been course. watching a lot of Bottom recently. Goodness, yeah, yeah. It was fantastic, you know. He's like, why am I not wearing any underwear? <laughs> why aren't you wearing any underwear, Lord Flushart? Because they haven't, they haven't been built yet that can take them on, yeah. you know. <laughs> he just arrived just to completely chew the set. And yeah, did much. to tremendous success. <laughs> but as far as Scooby Doo is concerned, yes, uh, we well, I had a very good time with the film. It's a good film. It is a really great film. And again, shot in Brisbane, Australia, correct, on the coast of Queensland. There at so Tangaluma yes. Resort. Shout out to you, Tangaluma Resort. Yeah, uh, yeah. So and it was actually released on the same day. This film, Scooby Doo, released on the same day as Wind Talkers <laughs> and The Born Identity. <laughs> great. So if you if you watched any of those films, uh, and, I have not. Okay, and also Shaggy does tell Scooby, "I have a bad feeling about this," which is a line that that a often appears in often appears in Scooby material. Yes, but also is popularized by Star Wars. I think it's in like every Star Wars film. Yes, it is. Um, and this is actually Hanna Barbera's last live action film. So oh, okay. And it was good that he started sort of started the live action Scooby Doo. I was going to say because there's the other one that came out a couple of years afterwards, mm. um, as well. Monsters Unleashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second one. I remember that. Maybe we'll cover that one as well. I like that one. So, and a little fact actually about the the, the screening of these for this film. Um, this was one of few uh, one of few films to actually show the trailer for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> right. When it was out. Is there a reason so for that? So what would happen is, when it was released in theatres, what would happen is, it was reported that many people, um, especially those that weren't Scooby-Doo fans, but instead were Harry Potter ones, would pay their money to go and see Scooby-Doo and sit down, watch the trailer, and then leave. <laughs> because it ha- because it literally it happened for loads of films. I remember when Phantom Menace used to was being marketed in 1998, 1999. Yeah. Um, before it came out, people would go to cinemas and like like pick a film, sit there and sit there and watch that, and wait for the Phantom Menace trailer to come up, watch the Phantom Menace trailer, and then leave. Yeah. Which Nowadays, strategy that you never get that kind of thing ever the, these days. Well, never, no, because all the trailers just go out on YouTube and mm. you can watch them. Mm. <laughs> but they, they were they, unless I don't I, feel, I don't I don't even think you really get a, any trailers that just come out in cinemas first and to, then online to the point when you will be sitting down in the cinema and you a trailer court and you will know exactly what the trailer's for because you've seen it online. You've already seen it. Yeah, because you've already seen it online. I don't I don't even think they do it where like you go to cinema and like oh this trailer's not even online yet we're just going to show it at cinemas first. I don't think that happens. No, no, they're all you need the internet nowadays. All online now. It was back when it was you know dial up. You used to have those dial up modems <laughs> and stuff like that. Well, you needed like two hours of uninterrupted phone use yeah. to get like a trailer that was like two, three minutes or something like that. So, I much prefer uh, uh, cinema cinema trailers. I like that. I, I like uh, I like getting the cinema early, sitting with your popcorn, and then like you hear the guy at the Odeon who's like, "And now yeah. it's time for the trailers." I'm um, like, "Great, I'm I'm in the zone. I'm gonna eat all my popcorn before the film starts." Yeah, but as far as the rating goes, yes, for Scooby Doo 2002, yeah. Would you like to perhaps go first? I have one. Okay. Um, and it's pretty good. Uh, is is it? Mm. I don't mind. Is it may, probably not as high as you think? Uh, mine is leaning f- for, and this isn't necessarily on its technical standpoint. I'm going to rate this as how much fun did I have watching right. this? So don't go, oh, but you rated this movie. Uh, the same rating as this. And this one's technically better. And so rating exactly this is how fun how it I is. Sound. I'm more than mocking, just mocking general film nerds. Right, okay. Not, not, but if, if a shoe fits, I guess. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> That's your own fault. I'm, I'm leaving. Um, I, I'm going to... It's a 7.5 or it's an 8. Okay. I don't know where I stand. I'm going to go an 8. Because I really like this film. I was going to go 7. Oh, okay. okay. That's not that far behind. No, no, it's not that far behind. <laughs> I know. Oh, when, well, you went, when you went, oh, it's not... like a 4. What were you expecting? Well, when you went, oh, it's not not it's not as high as you think. I thought it was going to go like a 5, like a 4. No. Like, you can't be doing that. It's just a, we, I like to say we're very positive on this show. I like to say we're very positive people on this show. It's very rare that a film will get below a 5 with us. It's because we don't look at it technically. Otherwise, no. it will be really low. Yeah. Like most comedies are low rated anyway. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Um, or films that try to do too much than they are. Yes. Hello, Army of the Dead. How are you doing? <laughs> so, for our weekly rec... Correct. It's your it's turn. directly in line. It's Scooby-Doo to a T. Okay. Right? It is Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, heck yeah. Corey, have you seen this? No. 
Do you want to see it? No. <laughs> you will be seeing it. <laughs> it is Scooby Doo. I know. I only know this because when I was in secondary school, um, we used to have like a common, like a common room. You yeah. know the common room, right? And one of the DVDs we had was this. Okay. And there was many a lunchtime where we just put this on and just laugh at it, right? Um, Scooby Doo and Shaggy D- and Shaggy go to, to go to WWE City. Which is like a city made of wrestling to go and watch WrestleMania, right? After they play the vi- after they play this WWE video game, yes. right? And on the arri- on the on the arrival, um, you may remember this the, the meme scene where the boulder is coming towards them and it's stopped by John Cena. Yeah. John Cena catches the boulder. <laughs> it is just it is eighty four minutes of hilarity and insane situations that only Scooby Doo and John Cena can provide, right? In tandem. Now you've got all your favourites. You got John Cena. Yes. You got Mr. McMahon. Correct. Right? You got Triple H. You got your Matt. You got Kane. He isn't there. You got Sin Cara. Correct. You got Brodus Clay. (laughs) (laughs) You've got MV. I think MVP's in it. He might be. You've got. AJ Lee, which is pretty sweet actually. Yeah. I like I love I love it with AJ Lee. So And they're all played by the actual people. You got Michael Cole. You got um I think that's it. I think <laughs> I'm looking for pictures uh Santino Morella. Santino well. right, okay, Santino Morella, it's your thing. <laughs> um, trying to find any other Corey pictures. Corey Burton's in it. Who is who who does all the announcing. Yeah. So and he was a great voice actor as well. Great Star Wars legend, Corey Burton. So and Transformers, but it's the story of trying to solve the WrestleMania mystery as who's I think the championship gets stolen, the WWE championship gets stolen or something. Probably. And there's like a bit, there's like a wrestling monster. There's like a big, I was about to say big red monster. But you think it's going to be Kane? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not Kane. It's not the big red machine. It's like a big bear. It's like a big orange bear, right? Yeah. You can probably find a picture of it. It's like a big, it's like a big red bear in like a skull mask. You probably think it's Kane. It's not Kane. No, I can see a picture now. Okay. And Kane stood right next to it. Okay, right. Okay, cool. Um, the Weirdly, guys... Kane's not holding it down. It's uh, Sin Cara and John Cena. Okay, right. Kane's just stood there. Okay, nice. Kane's watching. <laughs> Kane's directing traffic on the monster. Yeah. So, they, and it's the monster that's like to keep attacking people or something. So, they have to discover like, who it is. But it turns out um, it's like, like this Mr. McMahon's like assistant or something. Yeah. It's, it's this woman. Um, you know, and you know, because she's not actually in a real wrestler. She's, you know, a new character, and it's always the new character, isn't it? Yes. It's always either the new character, the guy that owns the place, or like helps them, whatever, and or like the shadowy, or maybe the shadowy is kind of like the red herring, or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, but no, it's Mrs. Whatever her name is, Mrs. M- Mrs. Richards is the villain, I think. Um, so, and then they, and also I love it because they act like wrestlers are these like super larger than life people who just can stop boulders with their bare hands and can flip a thousand feet in the air yeah right? it's amazing um yeah there you go there's a picture of scooby-doo on kane's shoulders there um and the the, the clips on the internet have become f- famous for the the meme content shall we say yeah uh, especially with john cena and uh, and scooby-doo and it's done in the sort of the mystery incorporated kind of style, you could say. Um, yeah, they've around this sort of new wrestler. There's this new wrestler, and I think it's the monster is like his dad, which is like working with this Mrs. Richards woman. Um, yeah, it's like a big red bear. Yeah, you go. Um, that's attacking people, and that, there's apparently they've made several WWE crossover Scooby Doo's. Um, there's another one I believe where they're in cars. Um, let me just check that. Here we go. Scooby Doo: The Curse of the Speed Demon. There you go. Which has, which, which is another crossover with Scooby Doo and WWE, where he they said they drive cars. It's uh, there's enough. Justin Justin Rhodes is even in it. I so mean, there you go. That didn't surprise me because it was actually a Scooby Doo episode, which was actually similar, but we also drove oh, cars. Oh really? But it was just an actual episode. It was a Scooby Doo and. Uh, Racky Races crossover. Sco- yeah, Scooby Doo and the Curse of the Speed Demon is the, se- the second crossover. But this is Scooby Doo WrestleMania Mystery is what I'm talking about. Yes. Maybe we'll cover Scooby Doo and the Curse of the, the Curse of the Speed Demon. So you know we've got again the Undertaker, Triple H, 
Gold Seamus is in it. Uh, Star Stardust. <laughs> Bit of Cody Rhodes. Yeah. You know, adrenaline in my soul. Cody Rhodes is with Scooby Doo, and the Miz as well. Not the Miz, and um, Lon Lana and Rusev, <laughs> and Michael Cole and Kofi and everybody. You know, Steve Bloom's in it. So well, I'm a big fan of Steve Bloom on this show. And Paige. That's kind of fun. I like how Paige and AJ both get spots. Yeah. As the, as the token girl. When Paige and AJ were basically holding up the women's division in in that time. I think that was 2014. Uh, no, 2016. Which is fun. So yeah, my, my weekly rec is um, Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery. Great. And I'm going to rate it dare I go harder than the actual film I think I think you're going to attack me if I do so I'll give it another I'll give it another 7 okay I'll give it another 7 the same level so go out and watch um, Wrestlemania Mystery it's on YouTube you can probably find it on YouTube for nothing yeah you would so go and watch Scooby Doo Wrestlemania Mystery do you remember the old fashioned Scooby cartoons how many have there been I remember the, I remember Mystery Incorporated was like the was the reboot? I so I used to watch it on Cartoon Network. Right. So whichever one was on Cartoon Network, I go. also used to watch. And I don't know if I remember this. Mm. Um, Scooby. Yeah, here we go. This is the reboot. Scooby Doo Mystery Inc. Um, 20, 2010. So not really. Uh, 2010, 2013. Matthew Lillard reprised his role as Shaggy. Good for him. Uh. Of the cast here. Yeah, Frank Welker's back as well. Yeah. Um, so is Matthew Lillard. And Lin Linda Cardinelli turns off as in a, in a cameo, um, which is nice. And it's it's nice to have uh, the reboot of certain cartoons to come back. I used to watch another one where it was Scooby-Doo and Shaggy uh, at a house, and they'd watch TV. Kind of boring I show. I can't remember what. Was it um, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? No. That was another reboot of the... Uh, that was 19... Um, oh, that says 1969. I think that was the original... I think it was the original cartoon, that. Uh, where, where is it? I can't remember what it was. I feel like it needs, like, a like a gritty reboot. Like, you know, there was that, that short film that had, like, Power Rangers in, like, a war zone. Yeah. Have you ever watched that? Did you watch that? No. Oh, there was, like, a, a, a fan film. It was a fan film. It was an animated reboot of... Um, uh, not animated, sorry. It was a live-action reboot of Power Rangers that was quite gritty and quite real. And they've been doing that recently. I thought like they should do one for Scooby-Doo. Where, like, they're all... Um, I'm trying to think of some sort of weird thing for them to be. They're all, like, they're all like journalists. And it's like they're, they're on the cutting edge of discovering supernatural powers and things like that. Yeah. And Sh Shaggy is just this, you know, wreck of a man. And... And um, to be honest, I felt like I, I do like the formula of a good Scooby Doo episode. Yeah. You know, they go to a spooky place, they go to a creepy place. They think it's the there's the panel on the wall, or there's the the foot thing, and the the, the, the plank the plank of wood, and then they just then they make their way over and they discover it's the it's the spooky zombie. Pretty fun. Correct. So we hope you enjoyed our little review of Scooby-Doo 2002 for this nice anniversary episode. We should have a look at what all the films are coming around anniversary True. and review them. True. That'd be fun. That's a good point. So for now, we hope you had a very good time, our little discussion, and our review of Scooby-Doo 2002. But for now, it's goodbye from me, goodbye, and a goodbye from Corey. Goodbye.